Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, continue talking about different units in physics. Um, today we will talk about units in magnetism. Derived units of magnetism. Derived from the base units which we have already covered in previous lectures. <coughs> now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. The website is totally free. I suggest you to use it. Uh, there are no advertisements, by the way, no strings attached. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. Um, in any case, the website contains prerequisite course, Mass for Teens. Uh, you do have to know Mass if you study physics. Now, this uh, part of the course, Units in Physics, is just some kind of a recap, because I'm talking only about units. Um, but I do touch base with certain concepts in physics because to talk about Unix in, let's say, magnetism, I have to talk about certain concepts related to magnetism, not in all the details, um, but just some of them as a recap. The most important part is in the corresponding lectures, in this case for electromagnetism and in some other cases. Okay, um, so let's go to magnetism. Well, magnetism is related to the concept of a field, as you know, magnetic field in this case. More precisely, it's electromagnetic field, but this was covered in the corresponding lectures about electromagnetism. Right now we're talking only about certain characteristics and more precisely magnetic characteristics of the field and how they can be measured. Now, well, the field implies that there is some kind of a force under certain circumstances. Now, you recall that there is a concept called Lorentz force. So what is Lorentz force? Now, I will use only the simplest magnetic field, magnetic field which is totally uniform. So there are magnetic field lines and if you can imagine, let's say, a very large magnet of this type, this is north, this is south, then in this particular part of the magnet, the lines, magnetic lines, are practically parallel. And you know what magnetic uh, lines is. Um, we covered this topic, how to basically display them using some kind of shavings, metal shavings. Okay, so that's done. So I'm assuming that we have a uniform magnetic field. <coughs> and these are the lines, lines of magnetic field. So it's totally parallel lines, and um, the vectors associated are of the same magnitude. Now, what about the force? and how can this force be actually demonstrated? Well, the force can be demonstrated if, um, if you put some kind of a conductor with electric current. Now, you remember that electrostatic uh, field manifests itself as a force if you put a static electric charge in it. There will be attraction or repelling. In case of magnetic field, um, you need a moving electric charge to demonstrate that there is some kind of a force. So let's say that perpendicularly to these lines, perpendicular is very important, um, it would be actually like perpendicular to the surface of the board. So I'll put it this way. There is an electric current. It's a conductor of length L. <coughs> now, electric current is basically a flow of electrons and there is certain amperage associated with it. And length has a fixed length. Now, if you do, if you do this, then the force will be perpendicular to both um, the magnetic uh, field lines and the line uh, of... Uh, of electric current. So if electric current is perpendicularly to this uh, board, then the direction of the force, which is perpendicular to both, to this 
and to this would be this. So this would be my force. So that was experimentally basically um, conf uh, confirmed, and the Lorentz force basically says that the force in its magnitude, so direction we have already determined, so force in its magnitude is proportional to both uh, the amperage and the length of the conductor. Okay, now what is proportional means that there is some kind of coefficient of proportional analogy, which in this case use the letter B. And this is a characteristic of the field itself. So regardless of what kind of a conductor um, uh, length or um, amperage which is going along the uh, along the conductor is the formula will be the same. So you will have twice as much amperage, you will have twice as much force. You will have twice as much length, you will have twice as much force. But the coefficient will be exactly the same because it's a characteristic of the field. And this characteristic is called either intensity, which uh, I prefer as a term, or there is another term, length here, but more precise, I would say. It's called magnetic flux density. So, magnetic flux density. Why is it flex flux density? I will uh, talk just uh, uh, a little bit later. But meanwhile, let's call it intensity So uh, uh, for, for now. So, intensity is a characteristic of the field. It's a vector. At any point of the field, it's directed along the magnetic field lines. <coughs> from north to south, usually. I mean, if it's a magnet like this, for example, and this is north and this is south, then magnetic field lines are like this, right? And the direction of the um, B vector would be tangential to, um, to every line. <coughs> so, this is direction, and the magnitude is basically a coefficient of proportionality. Now, obviously, at any point of space, it can be different, because maybe it will be further from the magnet, or it will be closer to the North Pole and then to the South. It's not a um, uniform field, generally speaking. I have defined it for a uniform field, which means that we can always define it locally. So for every locality, very small one, infinitesimally small one, obviously uh, it will be a concrete vector. So it's a vector field, basically. When the vector is defined at every point uh, of space around the magnet, it constitutes the vector field. It's a vector at each point this point vector, this point vector, etc. Okay, now let's talk about measuring intensity. Measuring this magnetic flux density. Well, from this formula it's very easy. We can measure it using... We have already defined units for um, force, units for um, uh, electric current and units for lengths, right? So, if B in this case is equal to F over um, I times L, so we can say that one unit of measurement of magnetic field intensity is one newton divided by ampere lengths. So it can be one newton force, which is produced by the field in case one ampere of electricity is going through the conductor of one meter length. Now, if this <coughs> condition, then whatever the magnetic field which delivers this one newton 
in case you put one ampere and one uh, along the one one meter, that's the unit of intensity, and it's called Tesla. Well, almost uh, mo mo most almost all units in physics. I'm not talking about early units like kilogram. I'm talking about a little bit more advanced units, which uh, were basically established, discovered much later. They're all in uh, honor of some physicists. In this case, it's Tesla. So Tesla is a unit of uh, magnetic flux density or intensity of the magnetic field. So uh, magnetic uh, field intensity is a vector. This is a unit of measurement of magnitude of this vector. And the direction, as I was saying, is um, along the magnetic line, magnetic field lines. So this is the unit. So let me just repeat again. If one amperage exists in the length of a conductor of one meter, and if the field is uniform and this conductor is perpendicular to the um, magnetic field lines, and if the resulting force is one newton, it means that the field, magnetic field, in this particular point, where this particular um, conductor is located, is one Tesla. Okay. Now, the second thing is related to magnetic flux. And that's where you will see why intensity is called magnetic field flux. Um, first of all, what is flux? Flux is basically a well, half mathematical, half physical concept, which basically means that if you have certain uh, vector field, and right, right now I uh, draw a uniform um, vector field, if you put some kind of a uh, area perpendicularly to this particular uh, vector field, so let's say vector field has magnitude v and the area is s then v times s basically is a flux it's amount of something which goes through this surface basically that's what it is now if situation is much more complex for example the source um, is uh, a point and the vector field goes this way and the area which you would like to basically um, find the flux through is some kind of I don't know ellipsoid or whatever around this point so it goes through this surface all the vectors go eventually through the surface how, how can we calculate the flux well it's an integration you take one small piece, one piece has a concrete vector which goes through it, and since it's infinitesimal piece, we can consider that vectors which are coming through this infinitesimal piece are all the same, and uh, it has certain area. You multiply these vectors by this infinitesimal area and integrate um, along the whole surface. It's mathematically involved, but physically it's much simpler. Um, so if, let's say, some source of energy, let's say uh, a heater, and it, you, you have a heater inside the room, and you would like to know how much um, energy is consumed by all, uh, all walls of the room, including ceiling and, and, uh, and floor. Well, that's basically the calculation of the flux. In this case, flux of the heat energy. Now, in case of magnetic field, we have exactly the same story. We have a vector field of intensity, right? That's B. And <coughs> if we put any kind of a surface through which uh, magnetic field lines are going through, you can always calculate the product. Well, if this surface, let's say, 
is a perpendicular, it's flat and perpendicular to um, magnetic field lines, well, you will just multiply by area. So this is area and this is intensity. So this is Tesla, this is meter square. So the unit of magnetic flux is Tesla times square meter, which is called Weber, WB, capital W lowercase b. So one Weber is one Tesla times meter square. So this is basically how <coughs> sorry <coughs> this is how the magnetic flux actually is calculated well um, magnetic and electricity and magnetism are very complex and I have this whole part of the uh, course called electromagnetism which explains the details uh, this is just a recap to talk about units of measurement of electricity, magnetism and some other things so that's why it's very brief. Uh, my purpose was to introduce basically two units of measurements related to magnetism, which is Tesla, that's a, a characteristic of the field. At each point it's a vector, uh, which is called intensity or magnetic, field fl uh, magnetic flux density. Um, and magnetic field is another concept which is integrated kind of a um, flow of whatever, magnetic field energy, if you wish. Uh, this measured in Weber's. And by the way, Weber is just yet another physicist. <laughs> physicist. Everything is by name of somebody. Um, I suggest you to read the notes for this, book, uh, for this lecture. Um, notes are on this website, just parallel to the lecture itself. So if you go to the website, you choose units in uh, physics 14's course, um, units in physics, that's the chapter or part of the course, and then you go to derived units, derived C units, and I'm talking about C only, because there are many other units and there are conversions, etc., which I'm not getting involved in. So it's a derived C units, and among the derived C units you have units of magnetism. So nodes basically are well, more or less the same thing as I'm talking about right now, but it's always good to not only to listen but also to read. We have different kind of parts of the brain involved in this. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.